makers, and welcome to Sheer Stitchery. I'm Katherine Harris, and if you're new here, I do sewing and DIY tutorials each week. This week is a very special week because I'm doing a sew along for a pattern that I have created for you guys. You can check it out at my shop. I will leave a link in the description down below. And if you're watching this on release week, for the first week, you can save 20% on this pattern using code SS20OFF. So SS20OFF. Now, this pattern is a skirt pattern as well as a pinafore pattern. And I have two views that you can do with it. You can have nice big patch pockets or you can have some inseam pockets or just omit the pockets altogether. You can do the skirt unlined or fully lined if you wanted. And the bodice part on the pinafore is fully lined. And because it is a high-waisted skirt, I have also included an option to add in some boning along the waist seams just to give it some nice structure and fit. So let's get on to that tutorial. So we're going to start with the optional patch pockets. So with this, you're going to fuse your interfacing the 1.5 centimeters down from the top edge, which is our seam allowance. Then we are going to surge around the perimeter of the pocket. Next, we are going to set a long stitch, do not back stitch, and we're just going to stitch along the corners of the patch pockets. So what this will do will give us some gathering stitches and able to bring those pockets in. Now we're going to fold over the top of the pocket here, and we're just folding it over to the top of the interfacing and doing a double fold and then stitching along there. And once it is stitched, it will look something like this. And you can see that I am pulling on the bobbin threads here. So I just need to separate it out and then pull on the bobbin threads to gather those corners just slightly. The next thing you're going to do is get your pressing jig, which you are going to transfer onto a hard cardstock, not regular paper, or it's not going to work. So you're going to place your pressing jig in here. And you can see that I have a larger pressing jig. That is because I reduced the size of my pockets for this version. And then I'm just going to tug on the threads just slightly to gather them up. And then I'm going to press, do not use steam or your paper is going to curl, but press with a hot iron to get the shape that you need. And now you can come in with some nice steam to really set that in place. This will get you a perfectly shaped pocket every time because fabric does shift. Next, you are going to take the placement markings for where the pockets go or wherever you think you'd like to have them and place them up. And I did some pattern matching on this one as well when I went to fussy cut out my pockets. Don't forget about seam allowances when you are doing that fussy cutting. And now I am just pinning this in place, making sure that it doesn't shift or move on me. And I'm just lining up my vertical and horizontal plaid lines first. And then I'm going to go in and add in a few more pins distributed throughout the rest of the pocket. And then I'm just going to stitch close to the edge here to attach our pocket in place. And this could be fun to do in a contrasting color in this pattern as well, or even use some cool decorative stitches to really highlight that pocket if you don't want it to blend as much as this one here is blending. And so once we have the pocket in place, and don't forget to backstitch at the top and the bottom, then we can move on to the inseam pockets, which is another alternative. So with the inseam pockets, you're going to have four pocket pieces and you've got a notch on your front and back skirt pieces and you're going to match that notch up with the notch that is on the pocket piece. Now, if you want your pockets higher or lower, you can always adjust this, but I found this to be a comfortable spot for my pockets. So I'm just pinning that in place and I'm making sure that my pocket bag is pointing downwards so you don't have it upside down with that and with right sides together. I'm just going to stitch that and then I'm going to serge the edges of my skirt, including the ones without the pocket piece on the back pieces of the skirt. So when it's all serged, it will look something like this. 
And then the next thing that we are going to do, this is the front here, is we are going to press it down. And so you're going to press it on both the front and the back pockets. And then understitch only on the front pockets, not the back pockets. So you're just going to understitch with the seam pressed towards the pocket piece. And you're just going to stitch along here so that the pocket lies towards the front. If we understitch on the back piece, the pocket isn't going to lie towards the front. It'll get pulled slightly to the back. Hence the reason we're only understitching the front of the pocket piece. Next, we are going to place right sides together with the skirt front and the skirt back pieces. And I like to pin above and below the pocket pieces first, and then I pin up the bottom and then I match up my pocket piece. And what I really like to do is really measure and feel where that seam is. And then once I've got that all pinned in place, we are going to stitch down, pivot at the pocket and stitch around the pocket and then stitch all the way down to the bottom of the skirt. So what that looks like on the sewing machine here, and I left a quarter of an inch seam allowance here. I need to go down a little bit more because our seam allowance is 1.5 centimeters here. And you are just going to pivot into the pocket here and then we're going to stitch around. If you find you have issues where you get holes in your pockets, you can stitch around the pocket bag two times for some extra security. I find I don't necessarily need this, but if you like, you can always do that. And then you pivot back out and you come in here. When it's all done, we are going to clip diagonally towards that corner of where we created that pivot. Next, we are going to turn our skirt flat and then we are going to press it. And I'm going to make sure that my pocket bag is pointed towards the front of the skirt panel. And then I am going to press this seam open as well as pressing the pocket bag towards the front of the skirt and just get that press nicely in there. Now onto the main skirt. So you're going to want to make sure that you have surged all the side edges of these skirt pieces. And the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to add in the darts on our skirt. So I'm just transferring those markings over. And then I like to use a quilting ruler to draw that on. You can draw it in with chalk. I'm using a water soluble marker because it shows up on camera just a little better. You can also use thread basting if you prefer, if your fabric doesn't take to any of those methods quite well. Next thing I like to do is I like to match up the bottom legs of my dart and then I use a pin going through one side and then through the other side, matching it up so that it exactly goes through that same line. And once I've hit the line exactly, I know that my dart is going to be exactly where I need it to be. And then I pinch the top of the dart, place a pin in there. And then usually when you get your pins in going along the next part of the dart, it fits perfectly. We're going to stitch starting at the bottom and then going towards the top. So you're going to backstitch at the bottom of your dart. And then as you go up to the end of your dart, do not backstitch. This creates additional bulk that will be seen on the front of your fabric here. What you're going to do is leave a long thread tail and then you're going to knot it two or three times. Personally, I like to do three times for extra security. And then you can clip those tails off and then we can move on to our pressing board and press those darts. So in order to press the darts, we want to first warm up the bottom edge of the dart, and then we're going to press it. And I'm pressing towards the center back on the back pieces of the skirt. And then I like to go to the front of the dart and give it a nice good press so that it looks good from the front as well as the back. So with our skirt pieces, they point towards the center back on the back. And then on the front skirt pieces, we are going to press them towards the center front. And it is the opposite for our lining pieces. If you are lining your skirt next, we are going to do the side seams of the skirt. If you haven't already done so with those inseam pockets. Now with this, we are just going to pin going all the way down on the side seams of our skirt, joining the front and the back pieces, right sides together. And I am doing a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. I actually have a setting on my sewing machine that enables my needle to go into the furthest left position so that I can just follow the edge of my presser foot. And I've got a perfect 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. Next thing you're going to do is take it over to your pressing mat and give it a nice good press to press open those seams. 
And if you're doing the optional lining, you are going to do the exact same thing where we are joining the pieces together along the side seam. And this goes whether you have inseam pockets or patch pockets, because this is going to be fully enclosed even with those inseam pockets. Next, we're on to the pinafore strap. So this is just view A. So with the pinafore straps, we have one piece that has interfacing and one piece that does not. We're going to place these pieces right side together, and then we are going to pin along the long edge of the straps, and we're going to stitch down each of those ends, leaving both short ends open so that we can turn them later. So once you've got that stitched, it should look a little something like this, and it's open on both ends. You can use a bodkin, or in my case, I am using a safety pin because that is something that is usually found in most sewing cases. So I am just pinning the edge and then I am going to turn it in. And because we have some interfacing, it can be a little bit fiddly getting it through. You can see my daughter's hands in the screen there. And we are just going to pull it all the way through so that it is right side out. So once it's right side out, we are going to take it over to the pressing mat and we are going to give it a nice good press with some steam. And then we are going to top stitch close to the edge to create a nice finish for our straps. And once we have that done on the one side, we're going to follow up and do the exact same top stitching along the other side. And that's what our straps will look like. Next, we're on to the pinafore of bodice, which is also view A. So we're going to stay stitch the curved seams along the pinafore bodice. And now we are going to do the darts. Now we're going to do the darts the exact same way that we did the skirt darts. So we're just going to transfer those pattern markings. Using our quilting ruler, we are going to draw out the dart. And you'll notice this one has a straight side on one end and a curved side on the other end. So the dart is a wee bit fiddly. So do make sure that you're pinning the bottom and then the top and then going through and really matching up where those lines are so that you get a nice good fit. And then we are just going to press this and this also has some side darts in as well and on this muslin I didn't actually show you the side darts but there are side darts and those will be pressed downwards. And then when you do the lining pieces when you do the darts you're going to press them in the opposite direction. So on the bodice they are facing towards center front and on the lining they are facing away from center front and then they are also facing upwards. So next we are going to attach the straps to the bodice front. So with right sides together, and your straps don't really have a right and a wrong side, but if you have a side that you think looks a little prettier, use that side to face the right side of your bodice. Then you're going to measure just over 1.5 centimeters away because we do not want our straps to get caught in our seam allowance. And you're going to measure that on either side and we're going to base that in place within our seam allowance. So once it's been basted, then we're going to sandwich those straps together with the lining piece. So I'm just pinning the lining piece going all the way down, leaving the bottom edge open, but otherwise going all the way around the perimeter of the bodice. And then we're going to stitch this with our 1.5 centimeter seam allowance going all the way around here. So just make sure you carefully go over to your machine and stitch that in place. And it should look a little something like this. Now, what we're going to need to do is we are going to create some ease. So we have to clip these corners. And I found the best way to do that is to cut out little triangles to remove some of that fabric and create some nice ease to make it just breathe and go, ah, and it'll lay nice and flat. Next, I am clipping out the corners and I'm cutting out a triangle. You can also just clip out the entire side of it. But make sure you do that along all of the curves and those points. Then we're going to turn it right side out. And once it's right side out, then we can take it over to our pressing mat and we are going to give it a nice good press. And as you're pressing, you need to roll it in your fingers and just roll that seam slightly towards the wrong side or the lining side so that that lining doesn't show from the front. Because when we top stitch this down, we want to make sure that you don't see any of that lining piece. And then we are going to top stitch around here. And that's what that will look like. Next, we're on to the waistband. And so with the waistband, we have interfaced this. 
and we are going to add the front and the back waistband matching up the notches and then we're just going to pin it in place and stitch down the side seams and you are going to press this open just so that we can reduce some of that bulk and it also helps if you are adding that optional boning at a later step as well And then you will have your lining piece, which is not interfaced, but if you have a very thin lining like this one here, you're going to want to add a small three inch strip of interfacing the same width as your waistband, just to add some stabilization as well as along the either end. And you're going to want to place that 1.5 centimeters away from the end, because that is where we are going to be placing our boning in a later step. So, you might even want to do this even if you don't have super light interfacing or lining. Next is view A, which is just the pinafore dress. So with this, we are going to attach our pinafore bodice to the waistband. So the way it should line up is the notches on the waistband should match the darts that you have placed in your bodice and the ends of your bodice should match up to the side seam and 1.5 centimeters um, away and give or take a little, just depending on, um, how you got your darts sewn. Next, we want to fit this to make sure that our back straps match because I have added an additional amount to the straps because we all have different body types and you would always want to have too much rather than too little for your straps. So the first method, I am just placing it on my dress form and then I am pinning where I think the straps would look good based on this dress form. And this is a dress form that I actually made myself based on my own body measurements. And so I'm just pinning that in place and also following where the notches are to where you're going to be placing these straps. Next, you can also try it on yourself, which I find to be the best method. So you just pin it in place, place the pinafore where you'd like it to be, and then crisscross your straps and then feel where the pinafore top like the waistband meets the straps and place a pin there and do that on both sides and once you have that in place you can take it off and then we can adjust our straps so you can see here i have two pins one the top one is the dress form and the bottom one is me actually on my body so when i placed it on my body i found i wanted it just a little lower than where i placed it on my dress form Next, you want to cut off the excess, but don't forget to leave the 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. Now I did give an extra 10 centimeters in the straps. So if you're making this as a gift for someone and don't really know, I would suggest cutting off that 10 centimeters. It tends to be a good universal rule on where things are going to lie, but that extra 10 centimeters is there if you need it. So next, when you cut it off, you want to make sure you're cutting it off at an angle because these straps are going to lay at an angle and they're going to be opposite angles. And just take a look at the diagram in the instructions if you're confused as to which angle you should be cutting it at. Next, what we are going to do is we're going to baste where these straps are going to go. So lie it out and make sure none of the straps are twisted because that would be just dreadful if you've stitched it all together. You try it on and you realize your strap is twisted and you have to retake it out. So next, I am just pinning it in place where it goes. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other strap, just pinning it in place, right sides together towards the waistband here. And you can see that I've got the marking here and I'm just putting it on the front so you guys can see it a little better. And I'm having the edge of my strap go to that marking. So it's not the middle of it. I use the edge of that marking. And then we're just going to base that within the seam allowance right here. Next, we are going to put our waistband lining in place and you're going to match up those side seams to make sure they match up perfectly as well as either end. And you can also go by any of the pattern marking and notching that you have on there to make sure it's all matched up. And once that is all pinned in place, then you just stitch along here 
with your 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. Don't forget to clip those curves here. I think I missed filming that portion, but make sure you clip those curves and then take it over to our pressing station and give it a nice good press. Also rolling that fabric slightly towards the lining side or the wrong side of your fabric so your lining doesn't show through. Now we're not going to be top stitching this in place. So it's really important that at this stage of the game, you get a nice good press on here. Now you could top stitch this if you really wanted to, but I didn't. Next, you've got a number of different types of boning. This one, I'm using a flexible nylon boning just because you don't need to have a ton of structure, but because it is high-waisted, I would suggest putting in some structure so that it maintains its shape. So next, you are going to place it in both of the side seams as well as 1.5 centimeters away from the end of each of the ends, so lining each side of the zipper. So next, I am just going to measure this out. So I am going to measure 1.5 centimeters from the bottom of my waistband here. And that's where I'm going to place the bottom of this boning. And then I am going to place my finger here and I am going to clip just shy of the top of the boning where the the seam allowance comes and joins. And then I am just going to stitch this on with a zigzag. The great thing about this is you can stitch through the nylon boning and it's super quick and you don't need to create a casing like you would with a metal boning. And so that's what that will look like once you have it all stitched in place. Next is view B if you're doing just the skirt with your waistband. So you're going to place the lining waistband as well as the front waistband together matching the side seams as well as the notches and these notches now are just really to help you pin because you are not adding in your pinafore so you don't need to know where the straps or any of the darts go going to stitch along there you're going to clip those curves and give it a nice good press just like we did when it was attached to the bodice so this is what it is going to look like and if you can see, I've already taken the liberty of pressing the bottom of the lining piece. Next, we are going to attach the skirt to the bottom of the waistband here. And you're just going to attach that and stitch it with your regular seam allowance. Now for the optional skirt lining. So if you're going to be lining the skirt, you can just add that lining right on top. So you're going to place it with the wrong sides together on the skirt. So you can see that I've got the wrong side of my outside of my skirt is right sides together with the waistband. And I'm just placing the lining right side up or wrong sides together. Now let's get back to the waistband on view A. So this is the point where if you are going to be putting in a me made tag, you can add that in. So if you've purchased the paper pattern, it comes with some me made tags like the size me and size you tags and just stitch those in place. Now you've got some cute tags to go inside your pinafore jumper. So just like we did in the fully lined skirt version, we are going to attach the skirt in this manner as well. So next you are going to line up the side seams. I always line up my side seams first and we're attaching it just to the waistband front. Leave the lining out of the way. So place your pins in here and this is where a double pin could be helpful because then you can get a pin on either side of that seam when you're matching up those side seams. And the next thing I like to do is I like to match up where the darts in the skirt are based on the notches in the waistband because those should line up according to where those notches are. And then I'm just going to stitch that with a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. And then I'm going to clip the notches of the waistband. And once that is clipped, then we're going to take it over and we're going to press it. Now we want to press the skirt seam up towards the waistband so that both of the seams are pointing together. And then I'm just going to press under 1.5 centimeter seam allowance on our lining piece to make it easier for the hand sewing. Next, we're on to the back zip. So with your invisible zipper, you are going to take your iron and check your temperature settings because I have heard of zips melting before. I've never had a zipper melt and I'm using a high cotton setting here on my Rowenta, but 
I have heard of them doing that. I do use YKK zippers, so I'm wondering if different zipper manufacturers have different heat tolerances, but by pressing it, it really creates a closer finish on your invisible zip. Next, I am measuring my seam allowance, 1.5 centimeters away from the edge, and I'm marking this all the way down because this is where I'm going to place my zipper teeth. And so next I'm going to lay my zipper teeth face down with the zipper edge pointing towards my raw edges. So you can see I've got it twisted here. <laughs> Need to fix that before we stitch that down. Now it is straight and not twisted. And then I'm pulling my zipper so that the top is right at the end. And I am putting my zipper teeth where that little groove is, where I'm going to be stitching, right on the line that I've marked. So not the edge of the zipper teeth, but the little groove where my needle is going to go. So I am going to continue pinning all the way down my zipper until I hit where the bottom is, and then I'm going to stitch it in place. So I'm going to switch to an invisible zipper foot for this. I'm just going to take off my regular presser foot and add my invisible zipper foot on here. Great thing about this is you can sew both ways on it because it's got grooves on both sides, but you're just going to line up the groove on whichever side, and in my case, it's the left side. And then I'm going to adjust my needle position so that I have my needle exactly in that little groove that is formed in that invisible zipper. Next, we are going to backstitch at the bottom. It's an area of tension. And then we're going to continue stitching in that little tiny groove right beside the invisible zipper. And you're going to make sure that when you go over the little hump of the seam allowance with the waistband, that the seam is pointed upwards towards the waistband. So just be careful when stitching that. And I'm just holding the end of the zipper out of the way with my pin, just so I don't stitch on it and it creates a pucker. So now that we have the one side done, we're going to zip the zipper right back up. And then you're going to get out your marker and you need to mark a couple of things. First, you need to mark the seam of the waistband as well as the finishing point. Then you can unzip your zipper. I'm just flipping it right sides together to make sure I don't have it twisted. I have sewn zippers twisted before and it is never fun. Next, we are going to place the same markings that we had done before. I've just pinned my zipper up here to make sure that I've got it so that it is not twisted when I go to pin it later. So I'm just marking that 1.5 centimeters all the way down and then I'm pinning it in place. And then the most important mark is to make sure that that line that we drew on the zipper where the waistband is matches up exactly with that waistband seam. Because when we do our zipper up, that seam will match. If you do not follow that, you will have mismatched back seams and it's not going to look as professional. So that now you have our zipper installed. We just need to finish the back seam here. So I'm just folding the zipper out of the way and then I'm placing a generous amount of pins beside the zipper that has already been stitched and then one in going vertically and one horizontally just to hold that in place because it will be an area that we're going to sew later. We're gonna start at the bottom and then we are going to stitch up using our same 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. And then when you get close to the zipper, you're going to backstitch, put away your regular presser foot and put in a zipper presser foot. Then you're going to place your needle exactly where you had left off. You're going to do a little backstitch here for security. And then you're going to make sure that the zipper is pulled away on both sides. And then we are going to stitch up as close to that zipper teeth as we can. And we're going to create a line of stitching parallel to where we had stitched in the zipper, but Oh, so close. I'm talking millimeters away from where that zipper teeth is. Hence the reason we are using a zipper foot so that we can get super close to that zipper teeth. So once we've got a couple of stitches over overlapping there, we're going to backstitch and I'm backstitching two times to create some extra security here. And then I just want to show you how close I've gotten to where that zipper seam is. If you can see, I would say it's about two or three millimeters apart. Next thing you're going to do is you are going to stitch off the bottom end of your zipper so that we can clip it because we don't need this big long zipper tail hanging in the back of our jumper. And now that we have that clipped off, now we can go and press the back seam. 
And so we want to press the back seam open. So you just need to go in with your iron and press it nice and open. And because you've got the zipper in there, it's already open, but I'd still give it a nice good press. Now we're on to the waistband lining. So once this is all done, then we're going to head up to the waistband lining here. And I'm just clipping off this little tail piece. You don't need to do that. You could actually sew it in, but I always worry that I'm going to get it stuck in the seam and there's going to be a little piece poking through. So I always trim it off, but it's completely unnecessary. I'm sure you could stitch it without having it come in the seam. Next, you want to make sure that that bottom fold that you folded over that 1.5 centimeters comes exactly to where the fold is in that seam of the waistband. And then we're just going to stitch up here. So it's folded up and then we're going to stitch with right sides together and use your zipper foot. So keep that zipper foot that you had on earlier. And we're going to stitch along here, but you're not going to go as close as you did with your stitching when you sewed the invisible zipper you want it to be two or three millimeters away from that zipper teeth on the lining piece here so i'm just going to flip it right side out and show you that it's slightly further away so right there it's right up against the teeth and right here it's just slightly away from the zipper teeth because you want your lining to be slightly away to help reduce that bulk and so that it doesn't get caught in your zipper when you're doing it up so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to clip that corner here and I'm just using a diagonal cut and that really helps to reduce that bulk and create a nice point. Next, we are going to press that to make it lie nicely. And then we are going to use a needle and thread to close up that seam. I am doing a ladder stitch. I will leave a card up here if you would like a more detailed tutorial on how to do that. You could also stitch this with the sewing machine, but you will have some visible top stitches. And personally, in my opinion, I just prefer that completely invisible look that the hand stitching gives you. Next, for the optional fully lined skirt, we are going to do a very similar thing here. So we are going to stitch the invisible zipper just as we did with the regular skirt version here. And then when we go to stitch the bottom of the skirt for the lining portion, you're going to stitch up to that notched point where the zipper ends. And once you have that in place, then we're going to do the top just a little bit different. So we're actually going to hand stitch this in place as opposed to machine stitching it just because we can get the fabric to lay a little nicer. So I'm going to ladder stitch this in place, but I am just going to pin the lining, both the lining of the band as well as the lining of the skirt in place here. And then we're just going to hand stitch all the way down, going along here, covering in all of those seams. Next, we are on to the hem. So you are going to serge the bottom of your hem. And in order to conceal the serger tails, don't just clip them. You are going to place them in a pin and you're going to hide those thread tails so they don't unravel on you as you wash your garment. Now you can clip them. And then we are going to fold up the hem of our seam allowance here. So I'm just getting out my gauge here and measuring that and then I am going to press that in place and if you are using a fabric that presses nicely you probably don't need pins to do it and you can take it to the machine and just stitch it. Now if you have the optional fully lined version you're going to take off oh a good inch and a half or inch of that and what I did is I just surged it off as opposed to cutting and then surging it just saves a step. And then you're going to hem it the same way, but then if you cut off that inch, then it shall lie slightly underneath. And now for the finishing touches, we're just going to add a hook and an eye to the top of our pinafore. And I'm just hand stitching this in place so that it is all ready. And once we have that completed, we will have a very cute pinafore jumper that you can get out and wear. Now, isn't that cute? Now that we 
have the skirt or the pinafore all sewn up, I wanted to give a huge thank you to all of my pattern testers and brand ambassadors that helped make this pattern possible with adjustments so that when you get this pattern, it will fit you right. So a little thing to note, I did put in five centimeters of ease in this pattern. So it is a bit more roomy and comfortable. If you are wanting something that is nice and really tight fitting, I would suggest going down one size and that should accommodate any of that ease. That being said, I would love to see your makes on socials. Don't forget to tag me at Sheer Stitchery, as well as use the hashtag Ivy Pinafore. If you have any requests on any new patterns that you'd like me to release, please let me know in the comments down below and let me know what you thought of this pattern. Until next time, makers, let's get our sewspiration on. Ba -ba -dum 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 -dum.